After supporting 45 watt super fast charge 2.0 for one generation of phones, Samsung appears to only be concerned with matching Apple's 25 watt max capabilities. Xiaomi and Oppo phones in China continue to push USB charging to 45, 65, and even 120 watts fast charging levels, but Samsung has decided not to continue this USB charging arms race for now. Fortunately, the Galaxy S21 does continue supporting wireless fast charge 2.0. In this episode, we look at how the Galaxy S21 has reduced fast charging support and help you figure out which chargers to use. This video is part of a continuing series which looks at how different charging technologies work. We use visualization techniques so that you can better understand how USB and Qi wireless charging works with various iPhone, Pixel, and Galaxy models. In this video, we focus specifically on the Galaxy S21, but definitely check out our earlier episodes if you have interest in these other models. We'll do all our testing on the Galaxy S21 Ultra 5G, and let's see how this compares with the previous version, the S20 Ultra 5G. The Galaxy S21 Ultra 5G is about 2% larger, has about the same size battery, but has reduced its max charge power by about 34%, and all this results in much slower charging observed for both USB and wireless charging. Let's first start with the ideal case where we employ a fan to reduce excess heat that gives us the fastest charging curves. On the left, we have the Galaxy S20 and on the right, we have the Galaxy S21 Ultra 5G. On the left, because we are using the S20, we can take advantage of 45 watt based Samsung power adapter, which supports super fast charge 2.0 whereas on the right, because the S21 does not support super fast charge 2.0, we can only see the effects using 25 watt super fast charge technology. Still, with using the 45 watt power adapter in a super fast charge original mode, we can see that the power starts at 25 watts, goes up to about 27.5 watts, and then drops down after that with the S21. With the S20, the same power adapter starts charging at close to about 38 watts and then goes down steadily to the next power level, about 30 watts of USB power, and then drops down again. Overall, we can see that with this faster charging, the S20 Ultra 5G achieves 100% battery in about 65 minutes, whereas the S21 Ultra 5G achieves 100% battery after about 75 minutes. Let's remove the fan from the setup so we can see the impacts that charging cooldown periods have on overall charging performance. On the right with the S21 Ultra 5G, there is some initial attempts to do faster charging, but most of the charging is done at about 7.5 watts to keep the temperature down and we don't achieve full 100% battery until 150 minutes. With the S20 Ultra 5G, there is much more frequent attempts to do faster charging and we achieve 100% battery in a lot shorter period of time, closer to about 90 minutes. On the wireless charging side, both phones support wireless fast charge 2.0. However, the amount of power that is used to charge the battery is different. If we see how both phones charge with the 15 watt Samsung Qi stand, which supports wireless fast charge 2.0, you can see that with the Galaxy S21, the battery power charging level is about 10 watts, while with the S20 Ultra 5G, the battery power charging level is closer to 12 watts. And if we look at the 
overall charging profile, the S21 Ultra 5G can achieve full 100% battery charge in about 110, 115 minutes, while the S20 Ultra 5G achieves 100% battery closer to about 105 minutes. Now again, this these charging profiles are done at room temperature with a fan, so all excess heat is removed and we can see the fastest charging curves. Now if we remove the fan, things start to look bad for the Galaxy S21 Ultra 5G. Without the fan to remove the excess heat, there is a sharp rise in the phone's temperature and then there is a corresponding decrease in the power that the phone uses to charge the phone in order to bring the temperature back down. And this cycle continues throughout the entire charging process. And even after 350 minutes of charging, only 49% battery is achieved with the S21 Ultra 5G. Look at these temperature fluctuations. On the S20 Ultra 5G side, things look a lot better when charging at room temperature with the 15 watt Samsung C stand and is able to take advantage of the faster charging for short durations of time without having to deal with the same temperature fluctuations. And we can see that the phone can achieve full battery charge after about 300 minutes. Like the Note 20, the S21 can't really take advantage of the 45 watt super fast charge 2.0 charger that you may have purchased with the Note 10 Plus or the S20. If you use this charger with the S21, you'll get only about 25 watts of max USB power charging. The good news is that you can still use any USB power delivery with PPS technology to be able to take advantage of this 25 watt charging with the S21. Now, if we look at these curves and compare how the S21 takes advantage of USB PD with PPS, it's best to take into account air flow. On the left, we have charging taking place in room temperature and on the right we have charging taking place at room temperature with a fan so you can see with airflow there is very consistent power drawn from the charger and there are no cool down periods uh, employed and full charging can be achieved in about 75 minutes but if you're just charging your s21 with a USB power delivery with PPS charger. There is some attempt initially to charge at a higher level, but most of the charging is done at closer to 7.5 watts, and you only get to 100% battery in more like 150 minutes. Airflow becomes even more important if you want to fast charge your S21 wirelessly using wireless fast charge 2.0 technology. Here, even with the fan that is incorporated inside the Samsung 15 watt C stand, that is not enough. You can see that when the S21 is charging on that C stand at room temperature, even with the fan that's not strong enough to handle the sharp increase in heat and all these rapid cool down periods results in very, very slow charging. But if you can use some sort of airflow on your S21 while charging on the Qi stand, you can see very different results. And after about 110, 115 minutes, you can achieve full battery charge percentage Whereas in that same amount of time, you only hit closer to about maybe 20% battery charge at room temperature without a fan. It's clear that the S21 and Note 20 have similar charging behavior. We hope you learned a lot about how these various phone models charged over Qi wireless charging technologies or USB-based technologies. 
Next, we'll look at the overall charging strategies by various companies and also look more closely at how to choose the best chargers. To stay up to date on our latest testing analysis, be sure to subscribe here. Also, you can go to www.gtrusted.com to see all our in-depth analysis and benchmarking data. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you in a future episode.